Hi there. This is John Labensold for KillerPHP.com, and this is part eight of a nine-part series, or looks to be a nine-part series, on advanced MySQL usage. And today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can do backups and restore your data with the help of the MySQL dump function that comes with pretty much every distribution of MySQL. So let's just get started here. If I start by showing you the tables from our last video, you can very easily see that we've got author, post, and then we've got post count, post with authors, and published posts, which are all views that we created in the last two videos. So if I want to do any kind of uh, backups of my data, the most effective way of doing this is actually from the command line. Now granted, you can also do this, and I'm just going to show you quickly how, um, if I just create a new tab here, so you can see. Uh, if you do have a, a map configuration, then it's actually very easy for you to just use the uh, phpMyAdmin tool set that usually comes with some kind of LAMP stack, whatever it may be. And from phpMyAdmin, uh, if you remember it from the uh, introductory tutorial that Stefan did, you can see basically your whole database schema and you can see how many records you have and everything else. But you can also do an export of your data. So if I were to check all and I said export and at the bottom here you can actually save it as a file or you can just hit go. And when you hit go you'll see that MySQL will actually generate all the necessary statements for creating the, uh, the, the constraints that we looked at in even the first or the second video to creating the views that we described in the last video uh, and so on and so forth and even all the tables and all the, the rows and everything else. So this is a great way of doing your backups. If you don't have access to this, or if you're, for example, using SSH to log into a server and you don't have phpMyAdmin at your disposal, then fear not. There's actually a very simple way of doing this too. So if I go back to my terminal and I just quit my SQL, you'll notice that in my, my particular MySQL binaries are stored in the uh, the bin folder here. So I have MySQL client test, MySQL config, MySQL find rows, install DB, and so on and so forth, MySQL admin. Uh, but there's also MySQL dump. And MySQL dump is a really simple way of just dumping out all the information in a particular database. And it's great if you want to do that, turn it into an SQL file similar to the scripts that we've been creating over time, except that this is going to be something that is automatically generated for us. So I'm just going to create a MySQL, I'm just going to run MySQL dump from here and see what happens. So you're going to notice that it's going to give me a selection of options. Now in this case, my first option is going to be that I want to access my database using root and my password for my database is actually going to be root not very high security. And if I just specify the database name, then what's going to happen is it's just going to dump everything out straight to my command line, which isn't very helpful. I mean, yeah, you can copy and paste it, but that's not a very elegant solution. With a bit of shell scripting, we can actually easily move this into a file. So if I wanted to push all of the data that the MySQL dump function is going to return, then it would just be a matter of using the greater than symbol, which will pipe that output into a file, and then I just need to specify a file. So in this case, it's going to be KPHP SQL, and I'm going to call it backup.sql. Hit enter, and nothing should happen, or seem to happen. However, if I go to this particular folder using CD and then using the tilde, which takes me home to my desktop, to KPHP SQL, which is the folder that I have this particular backup file sitting in, and I were to, or even I can just go into my finder here, so it's 
nice and easy for you to see. If I go to my desktop, I'm going to have in my KPHP SQL folder a backup.sql that was just created. So if I open this in my editor, you can see that it has all the necessary information for defining the uh, the website that I or the, the the database schema for my website. So it's got you know the inserts. It's got you know a whole bunch of extra junk which might not necessarily be uh, super user friendly, but at least we know that it's all it's all there. So with that in place, we can also see that there's the views and everything else. So if I just select all of this and I were to go back here into MySQL and for the sake of argument I was going to say okay show databases I've got a whole bunch of databases here if I wanted to create a new database called KPHP backup with a collation of UTF-8 underscore general underscore CI and a encoding of UTF-8. I believe that's how you would do it. Uh, ah, here we go. It's actually not collate, it's character set. Yeah, so collate is fine, but it's actually character set. So if I create this KPHP backup and I decide I want to use KPHP backup, Then if I go back here and I take my backup.sql file, select it all, and then paste it in, then it's going to say dump completed, everything looks good. If I say show tables, I'm going to get all of the tables from my KPHP ta uh, database, including all of the views. So if I say define post with underscore authors, oops, I mean describe post underscore with underscore authors. I'm going to get a description of that. If I say select star from published posts, I should get a nice description of that. And everything is in place. So with that one simple MySQL dump command, if you wanted to and you had to log into MySQL, this would be a very simple way of doing it. Another way of doing it is actually without even accessing MySQL at all. So to illustrate this example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, drop the database of kphp underscore backup, show databases, and then I'm going to recreate the create database kphp underscore backup, and then collate to utf8 underscore general underscore ci. It's very important that you make sure that your defaults are properly set up or else you'll end up having like a Swedish character set for some of your columns and then a utf8 one for other columns, which if you have any kind of funny characters or you know if you're trying to store multiple languages, you're going to set yourself up for a lot of trouble. Uh, and we're going to have the character set set to utf8. So I've created this kphp backup database, except that now if I say use kphp underscore backup and I show tables, it's going to be absolutely empty. Now if I quit my SQL, instead of just running my ex regular MySQL query and specifying kphp underscore backup as my database, I can then pipe the backup SQL script back into MySQL through the client. And that means instead of using the greater than to output to a file, I'm just going to use the less than, and then I'm going to find that backup.sql file. So in this case, it's in KPHP SQL, backup.sql. If I hit enter, it'll take a moment, and then it'll just pipe all that information back into the SQL server. If I run, the client and I say show tables, then they're going to be back where they belong. So with a couple of very simple commands at your disposal, it's actually not difficult to do your backups and your restores and to be able to easily manage your database. If you're moving from a development environment to a staging environment, if you need to create a test script 
uh, to show that there's certain integrity that, that is maintained within your application, um, you know, these little simple queries are going to save you a ton of time. I'm John Levensold, and thanks for listening.